All right, can we give these little guys some credit for once? They are pretty darn cute, once you get a real good look at them. guys, it's MJ and welcome back to Pet Adventures again. So today we are going to talk about my favorite fish in the entire world and also one of, one of the most underrated fish ever. Yes, I mean balloon mollies. Some people don't take them seriously, but I do. I consider myself a balloon molly specialist. I'm not perfect. I do lose fish from time to time, but for the most part, I know how to keep them a lot healthier than most people can and I actually had a blue molly live for an entire two years, which is their whole life. And to keep a balloon molly alive for that long is impressive in the world of mollies. And as always, don't forget to check out my social medias down below. I have all social medias available, so go check those down below. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon. You guys get to see future content that I will be posting on this channel before anybody else does. And you guys get to see all the good stuff, all the goods, you know what I'm talking about. We have polls and Patreon only videos as well, so yes, go check it out. And lastly, of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell to make sure you see all my future uploads. And now it's time to learn about some pets. The first thing I do want to state before I recommend balloon mollies at all to you Please keep in mind that if you do not know how to take care of an aquarium yet and you're a beginner with aquatics, this video is not for you. This is the assumption that you have already worked with lots of tropical fish, you know how to cycle a tank, and you know all the basics of cycling a tank and having a fully established nice tank. <laughs> so if you have done that already and you're just now kind of trying to choose what fish you really want to be going for, every fish is different, even in the tropical sense, no matter what. Every fish has slightly different requirements and please keep in mind that fish in general are advanced. They're the most advanced thing as far as when you're choosing species from reptiles to small animals to fish. Fish are the most advanced. It is not easy and it does take a lot of work. However, it does become easy over time once you've learned all the basics. So first of all, balloon mollies are tropical fish. Their temperatures, which is what I'm going to talk about now, range from around hmm, maybe 77 to 80 degrees. You don't want to get any higher than 80 degrees because after that it can be pretty hot for them. So you do want to make sure that you can keep the water cool or hotter, well warmer, depending on what temperature is in your house. So around 76 to 77 to 80 is the best temperatures you can keep it. You don't want it to get too cold nor too hot. They like it kind of in the middle of that range. Now when it comes to tank size, balloon mollies do have to live in a lot of balloon mollies you know, in a big group, <laughs> they don't like to be alone. Of course, they're gonna feel a lot more scared. They love being with other fish. They are very peaceful fish. And just keep in mind though, even though they are peaceful fish, some males, pr preferably I have found some sailfin ma males for some reason can become aggressive uh, towards the females a little bit or even towards other males. So I do recommend keeping um, almost as many females as your tank can handle and when it comes to males don't really get more than two because a lot of males can get pretty aggressive with other males. When you get a big group of balloon mollies there is going to be a leader. I know that sounds crazy but 
there's always going to be one dominant male in the tank. If there's two males trying to be dominant with each other, it's never going to get resolved. So please keep in mind that that is how the group will allow itself. So when it comes to filters, I recommend an AquaClear. That's what I use. And then I also use additional bubblers in the tank. Definitely recommended 100%. Next, moving on to substrate. You can use pretty much any substrate you want. You can use gravel or sand. I prefer sand, that's just my thing, but either way, it doesn't really matter. Just keep in mind though, balloon mollies produce a lot of waste because they're really big piggies and they do like to eat a lot. <laughs> so please keep in mind that balloon mollies are big, big eaters. They will poop a lot in that tank. So be prepared to suck through the sand or gravel because there's gonna be a lot of waste in there. Now, balloon mollies are kind of partially saltwater fish. So in short terms, you need to level out their water with, um, you can do salt. Some people actually do use aquarium salt to level out the balances. They do require a salt water type they're more of a mixed fresh water with salt water so it's kind of a brackish water that you can do um, if you don't want to do salt sometimes you can level it out with crushed coral we use crushed coral to supplement for it to be kind of a brackish like water so you can use crushed coral we put that in our aqua clear filter that really levels out um, like the ph for them and things like that Crushed coral will definitely help out your pH for sure. So I actually recommend that for a lot of fish, but definitely balloon mollies. It is a must. If you don't have crushed coral in your filter, get it now is an absolute must. Next on to breeding. When it comes to breeding, it's very easy for balloon mollies. So there's no real effort required in balloon molly care as far as <laughs> breeding. They do it on their own as long as you have about two males or so and enough females. You'll get a lot of babies. The problem is, is it's really hard to catch them. But um, what I do is I try to check the tank regularly. And when I do find a baby, I try to get it with like a small measuring cup and I'll scoop them up and then put them in a separate tank. Usually I have a tank ready for other babies that arrive. <laughs> so you don't want to net them. A net is kind of harsh for a brand new fry is what they're called, baby fish. So I don't recommend that. But any kind of cup, you know, cupping them out will definitely do. Now, there aren't very many tail patterns you can get. There are regular balloon mollies, there are liar tail balloon mollies, and then there are sailfin. Every now and then you'll get a mixture of them, but that's basically the type of tails that you can choose from. There's also a wide variety of patterns and colors you can get balloon mollies in. Sometimes your local pet store will have incredible, incredible selections. So check by your local pet store often. You will find incredible tail types and patterns and colors in balloon mollies. It's just absolutely crazy. Next on to decorations in the tank and plants. So when it comes to plants for balloon mollies and other tropical fish, it doesn't really matter for the most part. Anything that they can really hide in, they're not really picky. So when it comes to plants, nothing crazy. You can get Anubias and the, uh, the swords. Sword plants and Anubias are pretty hardy for the most part. I'm not a plant expert whatsoever, but I do have a few plants in my tank that work out all right. And you can also do like moss balls. Moss balls are pretty cool. I like them in just about any tank. So you can do those in a balloon molly tank, but no specific plants needed. However, when it does come to balloon mollies, Blue mollies don't really hide much. Once they get used to their home, they're extremely social with the owner. So when when blue mollies get really adjusted to their home, they're so social that if you put your hand in the tank, they'll all come around your hand and just start nipping at your hand. It's incredible. They're actually really social little animals. Like it's it's crazy. So <laughs> that's what's great about them. If you're looking for a social fish that literally will interact with you, balloon mollies are great. Regular mollies are not as social. Regular mollies, not the balloon kind, but regular are not as social as the balloon type. I don't know what it is, but 
they bred those kind of fish to be very social animals. So <laughs> I don't know why, but if you're looking for a social, happy, active fish during the day, Balloon mollies are great for that. Now, when it comes to tank mates, of course I recommend other balloon mollies, but other things will do great too, as long as you pair them with other peaceful fish that can handle the uh, balloon molly uh, temperatures and you know parameters and all that stuff. As long as your the other fish can handle all that, then it's fine. Balloon mollies are not that fast of swimmers and they also will not really put up a fight with many fish so make sure whatever else you get is just an extremely peaceful fish that can live in balloon molly type parameters in the water. Next on to food. So for balloon mollies you want to keep it as vegetational as you can. Vegetational? That's not a word. Nope. So what I like to feed in my tank is a mixture of spirulina and algae wafers. So in the wild, they mostly nip at algae. So that's why I recommend having mostly vegetation in their diet. And if you can find things that have actual algae, please by all means get them algae because that is the ultimate thing that is really healthy for them. And a little fact here is if you see algae growing in your tank, in your balloon molly tank, Please, please keep in mind, leave some of it, not all of it if you don't want it, of course, like the front of your glass doesn't need it, but leave some of that in the tank because it's really good for your fish. And spirulina flakes have a lot of vegetation ingredients, so you want to keep it as veggie as you possibly can. So when you're out shopping for different types of foods, make sure that you get high quality vegetation type foods. So what you can do is you can look in the ingredients and if it's mostly like kelp and maybe algae and very plant-based, go ahead and try it out for your little balloon mollies. A minimum tank size I would say for a balloon molly group is a 30 gallon or bigger. So that's what I use. A 30 gallon or bigger is definitely going to be good. Anything smaller than that and it's just not good enough. You won't be able to put a group in there and you won't be, you will have to clean the water a lot more because like I said, they produce a lot of waste. As far as things that they're prone to, balloon mollies aren't really prone to much. The only thing I would say is you never want to scare them. They are kind of prone to having heart attacks, believe it or not. There aren't any specific diseases, diseases that they're prone to, but they can scare very easily. I've had moments where a new balloon molly, very scared in its home, like, if they get too scared for too long, they can literally die of just stress. So that's what they're prone to as far as uh, illnesses. Um, so when you first bring your balloon mollies home, keep the tank dark and keep the tank with hides in it. I don't think I mentioned that. A lot of hides are very necessary when you're first getting your balloon mollies. Now my balloon mollies don't use hides now because they feel safe in their home and they love it, but when you first have balloon mollies in, in their new home for the very first time, absolutely mandatory. You need to have hides and you need to keep the tank dark. Don't put on any bright lights, keep it dark. So if you have a dark place where you're treating them and stuff, please keep that in mind. And of course, as always, keep them in a separate tank. Treat them with um, erythromycin. Let me see if I can get it out here. Erythromycin and um, general cure works really well so you can use general cure for the most part you could just use and um, th those are really good so API erythromycin general cure and there's like fungus cure all those meds are usually really good that's what I use the most but general cure you can use when they're getting first treated so if you already know the basics of keeping a tank in general and you're looking for the tropical type fish that are going to be small that don't grow very big blue mollies are it they remain small if you're looking for something small and cute and tropical and friendly a balloon molly group is beautiful. I know these are underrated fish and I know that people don't talk about them, but I wish people did more because you can learn a lot about them. Yes, they are sensitive fish and maybe that's why people don't like buying them, but when you get used to them and you learn what they need and don't need and things like that, eventually you'll really love, just love these little guys. So. 
if you're getting blue mollies for the first time or getting your first tropical tank, yay, congratulations and happy, happy trails on that. Yeah, yeah, props to you for establishing your first tank. So please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and give this video a big thumbs up, especially if you love pets and blue mollies. And I'll see you guys next time.